What's up guys, back with another educational video. But before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm, and share this video so that we get good information out to more people. There was a recent systematic review and meta-analysis published on intermittent fasting where they looked at short-term and long-term intermittent fasting protocols compared to isocaloric non-intermittent fasting protocols. Now this is really important. There have been some meta-analyses previously showing benefits to intermittent fasting. When somebody says something's good or something's bad, the question next should always be compared to what? So in these meta-analyses where intermittent fasting showed benefits, it was always comparing to a baseline diet. So what the people were eating previously, basically. This meta-analysis compared these intermittent fasting protocols to calorie equated non-intermittent fasting protocols, which is really important because we need to tease out whether the benefits of intermittent fasting are simply from energy restriction or if there's something independent of energy restriction that appears to be beneficial with intermittent fasting. The other cool thing about this is they separated the trials into shorter term, uh, under six month, and longer term trials to look to see if there was any differences. And they looked at weight loss, cardiometabolic markers, inflammatory markers, and appetite. Across all metrics, they found no significant differences between intermittent fasting protocols and non-intermittent fasting protocols. And this was over 42 papers and 27 randomized control trials. And again, shorter term trials and longer term trials, the sum of the data showed the same thing, no differences. So when we talk about weight loss, obviously they're just measuring the amount of weight these folks lose. We talk about cardiometabolic health, typically they're looking at things like HbA1c, blood lipids, markers of insulin sensitivity. So all those showed no difference in terms of when you sum up the studies, short term and long term, no difference. So this paper suggests that the benefits from intermittent fasting are simply due to the energy restriction it creates. And people who have originally said, oh, intermittent fasting has this magical thing with fasting, and you know, now they're kind of starting to walk that back a little bit. Some people aren't, but a lot of people are. And they're saying, well, you know, intermittent fasting, you just don't feel hungry on it. That doesn't seem to be the case either with regards to the summation of the data and the average. Okay, so you have to understand studies report averages. That doesn't mean for an individual person intermittent fasting might not be easier for them. There are certainly people I've spoken with and who have talked about online that for them intermittent fasting just felt easy. It didn't even feel like they were dieting. If you're that person, if you fall into that category, if it feels easy for you, then absolutely intermittent fasting can be a great way to lose weight. And it doesn't seem to have any negative downsides in terms of if you're doing shorter, like 16 to 18, maybe even 20 hour fasting periods. Now with longer fasting periods, like alternate day fasting or 5-2 diet, some of those studies have shown decreases in lean mass compared to calorie equated non-intermittent fasting protocols. And so in that case, I would exercise some caution because lean body mass is very important for maintaining metabolic health and for maintaining strength and lean mass after the age of 65 is associated strongly with longevity. Now, some people might say, well, this trial included, you know, all these studies that just did an eight hour feeding window and really to get the benefits of fasting and autophagy mode, you need to go, you know, a full day without fasting. By the way, autophagy is always happening. There is no autophagy mode, just in case y'all have forgotten. If you fast, it can increase the autophagy, but also if you calorie restrict, it increases autophagy. So there was a systematic review and meta-analyses back in 2018 that looked at longer fasting periods and looked at intermittent fasting protocols where on the fasting day, the energy intake was less than 25% of requirements. So alternate day fasting and like 5-2 diet, that sort of thing. And once again, they found no difference in weight loss or pretty much any of the markers they looked at. So once again, I want to emphasize, if you like intermittent fasting, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It absolutely does work, but it doesn't appear to work better than normal calorie restriction. Now that doesn't mean it may not work better for you, but not everyone is like you. I don't know if you guys realize this. Well, work for you might not work for somebody else. What feels easy for you might not feel easy for somebody else. I'm guilty of this. When I first started flexible dieting and just was counting macros and that allowed me to be more flexible with my diet, I felt like I had unlocked the key to fat loss because if it was easy for me, it's gonna be easy for everybody else. Well, 
dum dum, not everyone's like me. So for my individual psychology, my personal breakdown, flexible dieting felt easy. Tracking macros felt easy. For some people, tracking macros feels incredibly restrictive and they would rather do something like a low carb diet, a ketogenic diet, an intermittent fasting diet, a low fat diet, whatever have you. Pick your type of diet. That is completely fine. What is important is that we don't make strong claims about these diets that isn't supported by data because we give people the wrong impression and this can have unintended consequences. Let me give you an example. I have spoken with people who've been on intermittent fasting diets and they've been really hungry at times and felt like if they broke their fasting window, it would screw everything up. And instead of just having something small to satiate themselves, since they broke their fasting window, they felt like they'd already screwed up and they ended up binge eating. That is shown pervasively throughout the literature that the more you restrict, the more food rules you put in place, the greater incidence of binge eating response. I've talked with people who've done a ketogenic diet who said they felt like keeping their insulin low was the most important thing possible. And so if they had anything that brought their insulin up or any kind of starchy carbohydrate, they would just end up binge eating a bunch of junk because they felt like they'd already screwed it up. So what's the point? And the point is you haven't screwed it up. It's just a little bit. It's not black and white. There's nuance to this. So it's great to have tools in place and systems systems that you like to use, but you must also have the understanding of why it's working. And the why behind how it works is the fact that all these diets can help create calorie restriction. That's why our app Carbon Diet Coach doesn't force you into one kind of diet. You can choose any different kind of diet you want. You can do low carb, you can do ketogenic, you can do a balanced diet, you can do low fat plant-based, and we don't make you eat meals at specific times. So if you want to do some sort of time-restricted eating, you're able to do so. If you guys are interested in our app, make sure you click the link in the description, and I will catch you next week.